uh, good morning. Uh, I'm uh, Gérard Roland uh, from the University of California, Berkeley. And uh, I'm also the editor of the Journal of Comparative Economics, so I'm uh, very honored to, to open this uh, conference. I don't have to explain to you what the Journal of Comparative Economics is. I think you, you uh, all know about it. Uh, but we're really very excited that this conference is taking place. And uh, when we agreed to have a special symposium on Ukraine, uh, we thought it was a very good idea because, you know, right now Ukraine is at the frontier of democracy. You know, this is very, very important. Uh, uh, the, what's at stake in Ukraine, you know, is very important for the country, but has very big international meaning. And so we were very glad of doing it, but, you know, we're an academic uh, journal, so we publish uh, academic research, and very often there is a big lag. <laughs> Uh, between uh, policy making and, and uh, uh, you know, academic research. But I must say, I was quite surprised when uh, looking at the number of submissions, you know, the papers, uh, to see the enthusiasm and the energy uh, from uh, people doing actually really good research on Ukraine. And I think this, this shows the, the vitality of what's going on in this country, the enthusiasm for the changes, the, the, the aspirations. And so uh, uh, I'm, this is going to be a, a great conference. And of course, uh, uh, the organizers uh, uh, have, have been doing a, a fantastic work. And so without further ado, uh, I give the floor to uh, one of them, Yuri Gorodnichenko, who's also my colleague. Well, my job is going to be very easy. I'm, I'm going to thank everybody for coming. I'm going to thank uh, Gerard for allowing us to run this conference. I'm grateful to the Kiev School of Economics to, uh, for being our host to our uh, sponsors, uh, USAID, SAID, ACES, Berkeley, Western NIS Fund. Um, thanks very much. And I turn the word to another co-organizer, Timofey Milovanov. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, it's great pleasure uh, to have su such an exciting conference. Um, at Vox Ukraine, we try to um, create bridges between different um, groups of people who are interested uh, in helping Ukraine or thinking about Ukraine. And this conference is an example of that. Uh, there are uh, academic economists here, there are political scientists, there are policy makers, there are politicians, uh, there are experts, and these are people who are from very different fields, uh, all um, devoted to trying to change Ukraine and uh, bring it about and uh, secure the uh, prosperous future. Uh, and we're very honored that this event is taking place, uh, and we hope that uh, uh, Ukrainian thinking about Ukraine, about reforms, and about moving forward, will be able uh, to solidify and consolidate. And uh, finally, this is the time when y Ukraine will, will move forward. Thank you very much. And uh, with this, I turn the floor to Oksana Sarit, the Vice Speaker uh, of the Parliament. I think I'm looking at the, at the room, and as I see that nobody is using earphones, that means that English would be more comfortable language to speak, so if you don't mind, um, then I, I think it will be more comfortable for everyone. Good morning, and uh, I'm very pleased and honored to be here, and I'm very happy that such uh, symposiums, such forums, they uh, have in place, they've taken place, and they are uh, so attractive to different people, to uh, those who, to those thinkers who think about Ukraine, uh, both inside and outside. And I'm very, very happy that so many people from abroad as well, they came here to like to help us in those thinking considerations and looking for new visions and approaches. I, um, I liked the, I was intrigued by the title of the conference, Escape from the Soviet Legacy. And I was thinking about um, what it really, really means to whether we escaped from Soviet legacy or not, whether we are still there. And while thinking about this, I rem recall this last week in Parliament, for those who, I don't know how many of you observed the, the parliamentarian work, but in principle, this week was very, very remarkable. We were uh, struggling for a few very 
important things. First of all, in, in, on t Tuesday there were a few votings. First one was the very strong attempt to actually to revoke the reform of the prosecution, and it was a very hot tension in the parliament. Uh, it, it, I would say, they, uh, they didn't succeed, we didn't win. So, so far we are in a status quo. Uh, the reform didn't, of the prosecution didn't start it, but fortunately it was not revoked so far. The second, um, the second voting, uh, the second um, test was the voting for the draft law on civil service. It was, it was really, I would say, humiliating for the parliament. We, were, we did 20 attempts to vote for the draft law on the civil service and first reading. And it was one of the most systematic draft laws prepared by government and submitted to parliament since the beginning of the work of this parliament. And I'm speaking about those examples because those show, and as well as the uh, parliament and government activity, they show that in principle we are just approaching to the moment that we are trying to escape from somewhere. Because uh, they, we see such a strong resistance from the system, the, the, the system that was built within those years, uh, that now we see the real, real pressure from inside and that doesn't allow Ukrainian society to move on. But what we are, uh, what we really, what we really we fight in this, whether it is Soviet or post-Soviet legacy, what, what it is in nature. Uh, very often we start speaking about, um, now it's a very popular topic, fighting against corruption. But um, what do we really mean when we fight uh, against corruption? Whether that is, again, whether that is the fight with the source or with the consequences. If you, uh, for example, if we think about uh, corrupted judges, corrupted politicians, corrupted prosecutors, investigators, I'm not speaking about this low level corruption because this is because of the, of the um, unfortunately, of the level of um, um, economy, yes, so this is not, I don't think that this deserves special attention, but of this high level corruption. This, this corruption, this is the consequence only of the oligarchy economy in principle. Because uh, if you think about uh, what, what are those corrupted uh, judges, prosecutors, investigators and politicians, uh, are entitled to, they are entitled to protect the privileges of the oligarchs. Uh, if you speak about the oligarchy economy, it's very easy, it's very, very, very simple. The oligarchy economy is today uh, in Ukraine is um, privilege and monopoly access to the uh, natural resources and absolutely um, Mar and, and um, energy market without rules. Second, this is uh, intransparent procurement system that allows the uh, budget uh, frauds. And second, this is radar um, property, um, I don't, cannot find the word. Um, so, t t uh, violence of property rights in principle. And uh, this, was, this is what we have. So we, we have not even the Soviet model. We have the model that was already established uh, in modern Ukraine uh, based at, on the uh, incapability from the, on the early stage of independence to uh, establish proper democratic institutions. When, they, when we, we got the independence, we didn't establish those proper uh, rules of democracy, proper uh, parliament, proper institutions, proper parliament, uh, proper government uh, rules. And uh, at the end, uh, based on this um, inconsistency uh, in, 
uh, in those uh, state institutions. So we were pretending that we, are, we were doing the, the reforms. We were calling this, those uh, uh, the thing the right words, but we are doing, were doing constantly the wrong things. So we were calling our parliament parliament, but unfortunately it was not acting at the parliament. It was uh, blessing the decision that were taken uh, in, in other places. So it was not doing the parliamentary work. And those uh, make to believe play ended up that the, we enrooted this oligarchy economy that currently rules the country. And this is the escape, we can call it escape from the, um, from the Soviet uh, <coughs> legacy, but in fact, this is escape from the uh, oligarchy, uh, and not legacy, but reality. Uh, and uh, how, to, how to do this? Uh, and I, well, if we ask ourselves whether it was um, mm, possible to avoid this, I think it was unavoidable, because we didn't have enough uh, political will at that moment and enough understanding what to do. So in principle, it was a net kind of natural process. But currently, and again coming back to this example of what is going on in the parliament, uh, it means that there is enough of understanding that this is not going to work, that we have to change it. And that's why that just because we have already understood that this is not right, and we have this political will, maybe it's not strong enough, but we do have inside the slits in parliament, that's why the resistance of the system is so hard. Because as long as it was make-believe play, it was all smooth. You know, because somebody was pretending that was doing the reform, and other people were pretending that they were implementing this. And now we have this real clash, and we are approaching uh, big crisis of, uh, I think, a big crisis of parliament, and I'm not speaking about the coalition, not in sense of political, you know, dimension of, and uh, political shape of the parliament, but the parliament at the, and the institute in general, because the question will be um, whether we are ready really to uh, become the parliament as it should be and to take responsibilities for the decision that we are taking. And I believe that to provide for this escape from, the, uh, from this oligarchy uh, economy uh, and oligarchy reality, we have to establish proper institutions that, uh, uh, that would uh, move on in this direction. Parliament, proper par parliament uh, with the uh, dignity and self-respect, proper decision-making, process in government, so government is capable to make the decision-making process in, uh, as it should be. And those two then provide for the um, gradual uh, reforms in all other areas. I'm sorry, I look, uh, you're looking at the board, so <laughs> maybe I'm uh, speaking too long. Uh, I know, I, I'm, I've, I'm speaking a bit long, unfortunately I will not be able to stay with you and to participate in the discussion because of this tough schedule. And I just wanted to give you this insight from, uh, from what, what we are surviving right now. And um, I believe that you will, be, will have enough of very good uh, presentation and speeches and ability to discuss uh, different aspects and as well maybe this one that I presented to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Siroit, and uh, um, you know this is indeed a very important fight, and uh, uh, we're all watching, and many people in this room really want to contribute to it. So we have time for some uh, questions. So, so anybody want to to ask some some questions? Yes. As you well know, Lenin and Trotsky and his, his friends uh, disbanded the Tsarist Russian legal system that had already begun to make certain reforms and incorporate certain reforms and uh, you know, basically turned it, turned it into a theater or whatever. 
uh, one, of the, one of the reasons that the American Revolution succeeded was because it had the good fortune of being able to adopt the British legal system lock, stock, and barrel. When Ukraine became independent in 91, it had a make-believe legal system, and that's what was the principal problem in addition to you know, the oligarchy, et cetera. Maybe let's gather a few, a few questions and so, so you can answer to all at once. Who's next? So, uh, go, no. go ahead. Uh, there is a question. Oh, there's a question, okay. Vadim uh, Volosovich, Erasmus University. I was listening to your presentation uh, and uh, I was curious to see what do you mean by exact. You kind of distance yourself against the system, right? So there is a system and there is us. So who are you us and who is the system? So you sort of said it's oligarchic system, but can you define what do you mean by that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Very good questions and very good remark. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I do agree, absolutely agree with you that uh, in 1991 uh, the system was not changed and this is what uh, I, I actually meant, that we were pretending that uh, the, uh, the, the reforms are are taking place, and it, partly it, it was uh, it happened because the elites were the same. So in principle, they, though the same people remained in power. They were that they, they, just the titles of uh, institutions were changed, and maybe some th some other very formal characteristic were changed. But in principle, the people and their understanding of processes they remained at the same place. And even when I call it an administrative reform, administrative reform, administrative reform never took place. Uh, never, the decision-making process in government has never been changed from Soviet times. We are living in Soviet decision-making process for 20, what, four year, 24 years already. Uh, uh, even though we call it cabinet of ministers, uh, we, uh, we uh, call uh, minister politicians, but in principle, the the process itself, how it is initiated, that it is initiated not from the bottom, like to, to, not from the monitoring of policy, yes, and not from the uh, from the impact from something. It always generated on the back, on the top, and it's just in and it, it is enforced of the those who are. Uh, uh, who should develop the policy and build it and uh, actually to um, justify it and to build the arguments, they are, they are just enforced. So they are told that please draft something and those people that, who are drafting those uh, regulations on laws, they very often don't understand the reason why they should do this because it was just told from uh, on the top that they should do this. And this is the principle that, of decision making that uh, still apply. And uh, the, uh, this is one of the most important thing to change it because uh, we will not be able to do any reforms without changing the decision making process because any reform is a policy. And unless you are able to do policy making, you, are not, you can, will not be able to do the reforms. So we, we, we can discuss it, and, but I believe that you are all aware about this not uh, but even maybe better than I do. Uh, with regard to the, what the second um, remark is also very good. We, uh, who are us, who are, who are we, and who has the system? Uh, we, it, it, for me, uh, this is a very uh, crucial question because, um, well, getting into politics, I uh, accepted, like, I told myself that I'm already identifying myself as the, um, as the political power, so I cannot uh, op oppose anymore um, the uh, saying that the, there is power and there is me. This is true, I'm, I'm part of this power. But when I'm speaking about the system, um, I mean that um, those um, people, not very often not even in parliament, in, they are in parliament, but the biggest resistance come from the, uh, from the institutions outside uh, of, of the politics. For example, a general, uh, pro prosecution service. 
This is the system, one of the strongest system built in, not even uh, in, uh, in Ukraine, in independent Ukraine. It was built in Soviet times and it also has never been changed. It even worsened because to the big extent it was uh, turned into the political prosecution exclusively. And the biggest resistance, uh, for example, in the reform of the prosecution comes from the prosecution itself because they are interested to keep, to keep in, in this process of make-believe play, you know, that they will pretend that the, uh, the, the reform is taking place and they are changing, and we will pretend that we believe in this. Uh, the same uh, go, uh, refers to this uh, law on civil service. So the biggest resistance comes from the current civil service, not even from the politician themselves. The, 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 uh, you could not believe to what extent people were uh, working on civil service uh, in the ministries, in, even in the parliament, in parliamentary secretariat. They started this, you know, this way that this is, in, this is impossible, that you will ruin everything you, when you establish a transparent um, recruitment process for the civil service. You will ruin everything. You will lose everyone. So th this is what I mean when I speak about system and us. So we, I, when I say us, I mean the people in uh, politics who are ready to make those real steps and the system is the uh, settled environment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Siroid. So Thank you very much for taking the time uh, uh, um, you know, out of your very busy schedule. And so without further ado, we continue now to the parallel sessions in the second floor and the third floor. Uh, so thank you very much again. Thank you.